Welcome to DRGLT Economics. In this podcast, I want to discuss the swiftly deteriorating economic situation in Europe. Uh, I want to focus on five news events, uh, five pieces of news. And I want to construct uh, today's podcast in two sections. First, I want to dissect these five news events. Uh, I want to discuss, I want to give my opinion on who and what made each of these uh, events take place. And then in the second part of today's podcast, I want to discuss the question or try to answer the question, what could be done at this point? So let's start uh, first, the five pieces of news. They are number one, uh, the British pound sterling and the euro, uh, basically the currency crisis. Number two, the pension fund crisis. Number three, the banking crisis. Number four, the energy crisis. And number five, the economic crisis. In fact, I should have uh, uh, called them the five crises instead of five pieces of news. But for these five crises, there are some uh, more recent developments. Let's go into them one by one. First, uh, the British pound and uh, the euro. Yesterday, if you were, oh, not yesterday, but last week, if you were following the situation, you saw something quite spectacular. There was a day uh, that uh, both, uh, I think, uh, both the euro and the pound crashed extremely hard, and perhaps that was record setting for a uh, for the for, for currency of one of the quote unquote reputable countries economies. Uh, I think the pound last uh, at its peak close to five percent. I think certainly more than four percent um, at the lowest point. Even though uh, the uh, Bank of England intervened and um, uh, basically uh, provided a temporary rescue package by basically buying, purchasing the pound on the, mo on, on the open market. Uh, so that mitigated uh, the, the, the loss, uh, but I don't think this intervention is going to really be uh, that helpful. But let's just uh, answer the question, what, is, what has caused, what has caused this, uh, uh, this currency crisis? Two things. Number one, money printing. And number two, reckless spending. So that is loose fiscal, fiscal policy plus loose monetary policy. This combination uh, really underpins what, ha what was called, uh, or what is probably still referred to as modern monetary theory, which is a crackhead quote-unquote theory that uh, has been um, had been, or has been, I think, it still is, promoted by uh, people in power who want to print and spend and uh, who want future generations, future leaders to worry about the negative effects. Because as uh, Milton Friedman said, uh, the, um, uh, the positive effect of money printing comes first, they come quick. Uh, quickly, whereas uh, the negative effects, the the undesirable effects of money printing and inflation comes later. And in this delay, uh, you can enjoy a brief moment of uh, prosperity. And uh, the monetary theory, uh, the modern monetary theory, essentially says that if you continue to increase no, I mean, that's not what they say, but my understanding of uh, what they are thinking is that if you continue to increase the pace at which you print, uh, you make uh, uh, the, uh, the, the money, uh, the cost of money less and less, and you can indefinitely prolong this, um, this delay, uh, and you can indefinitely delay the reckoning. Apparently, this is not really the case. I'm not going to talk about uh, the aftermath and etc. That uh, is something that uh, we can discuss in a separate podcast. So that's the currency crisis caused by money printing 
and uh, uh, reckless spending. And then we have uh, the pension fund uh, crisis. I think uh, it was said that in, on that day, um, a lot of the pension funds in, the, in Britain uh, was on the brink because um, if the if the yield of um, the uh, of the uh, basically the debt of the uh, British government, I think it's called guild, whatever. What a ridiculous name! It's just like sterling. It's another ridiculous name. They should call it Great British Paper, and uh, the other thing should be called uh, plastic, probably not guild. Um, but anyways. Um, the pension funds was on the brink because uh, uh, they they were they used leverage to on the uh, on on the debt, basically. And uh, why were they using leverage? This is again has to do with money printing, and uh, very low negative some in some instances interest rates. And this is not limited to Britain; it's across the Western economies. Uh, in Europe, uh, in particular, this is very bad because. Uh, in the uh, eurozone, the interest rates were indeed negative, and those uh, pension funds were mandated to uh, are mandated to invest the majority of their holdings uh, in um, in pay, uh, in government bonds. Essentially, they were forced to uh, invest in something that does not pay anything, and. Uh, or maybe pay very little, so they have to use leverage. They have to uh, use a lot of uh, instruments that uh, essentially make something that is already very highly risky. Right, holding something, uh, holding the debt of something, somebody that is insolvent is already extremely risky. And then you use leverage on top of that. That is very bad. And uh, I think uh, as the um, uh, the debt crisis across Europe, and I mean across Europe, worsens this winter. We are going to see a lot of pension funds in a lot of European countries. I'm thinking France, I'm thinking Italy, I'm thinking Germany, and perhaps some others uh, are going to go bust. And then we're, we're going to see something. Uh, a lot of uh, older people, uh, retirees, uh, may go on the street. That's something that uh, to be beho to be beheld, huh? uh, something to behold. Sorry. Uh, and then the third one, the banking crisis. We have uh, we are seeing uh, towards the end of last week, there were a lot of chatter uh, around uh, the impending collapse of uh, Credit Suisse and uh, Deutsche Bank, and I think uh, Société Générale and Crédit Agricole. Um, are not so much better either. So these are banks that have uh, uh, a lot of um, a, a lot of assets, but uh, um, uh, but they don't have uh, um, how to say um, um, they are highly leveraged and. Uh, their book value uh, is high, but uh, the markets don't really value their uh, their holdings as, as so high. I think there's a lot of risk premium uh, priced in. So that is um, um, something that the market thinks that these banks are really very much exposed to the uh, to the economic crisis, to the uh, to the pension fund crisis, to the currency crisis. So. There is uh, a so there. There are some chatters uh, on the um, uh, on the banks. Some of these banks may need to be bailed out. I think these banks most likely will be bailed out. Um, but uh, uh, exactly what has caused these uh, crises? Well, that's money printing, right? And uh, by the way, I forgot to to mention for the pension fund crisis, uh, the cause is money printing, zero percent interest rate. Right, and for the banking crisis again, the same the same thing. They took on a lot of uh, a, a, a lot of debt, uh, so they have um, um, their uh, uh, their currency holding. Right, so so basically, you take uh, people's uh, people's savings, and then you issue uh, you, you you issue debt 
on on top of that, uh, that is uh, um, you have to lever up a lot uh, in Europe because of negative interest rate. Uh, you need to take a, take on a lot of risk in order to maybe make some profit. And in order to make a little bit of profit, basically these banks expose themselves to uh, um, to a lot of vulnerabilities, right? Uh, and uh, as the economic situation worsens, all these banks in a free market economy, in free market capitalism, all these banks will fail. And uh, uh, I think uh, this is going to be really colorful in the in the banking sector as well. Then the fourth issue, the energy crisis. I'm not going to go too much too deep into that because uh, I think it is quite obvious what has uh, what, what is currently developing. And uh, uh, this week, in the beginning of October 2022, it is already getting quite cold uh, in the quote unquote. I would say it's becoming fourth world. Uh, this country, um, which I'm leaving, I think, in a month's time, hopefully, hopefully, and uh, let them freeze. Uh, but whatever, this place, um, still no heating. It is, uh, at night, it's four degrees Celsius, no heating. I don't know when they are going to turn on the heating. Um, this this energy crisis is going to be very bad and is going to continue uh, for years to come. And uh, its impact is not just for people's um, uh, energy, uh, for electricity and uh, heating in homes, but more on um, the industries, because you can't run an industry without energy. So uh, this is going to be very bad. And what has caused it? Uh, I think that's war and sanctions and a little bit, oh, a lot of uh, irrational and uh, ideal, ideology, ideological, uh, ideology-driven um, policies. And lastly, there's uh, this economic crisis. Um, that's really the sum. The economic crisis is really the sum of the above. And what has caused it? War, sanctions, ideology, money printing, and uh, reckless spending. All right, so I think uh, I've talked enough uh, about uh, all these crises. Let's move on to uh, the second part of today's uh, podcast. What could be done? Straightforwardly, nothing. Nothing solves these problems. Nothing can be done. But I can tell you what will be done. I think, at least on my, in my opinion, what will be done. And I will tell you what the effects will be. So for the currency crisis, um, what they will do is, um, I think, they really can't do much. Uh, they can, um, they, 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 they will try to, countries that have some foreign currency reserves will try to buy their own currencies and uh, they, will bag the, they will bag the Federal Reserve to, um, uh, to, to slow down the tightening cycle. But as I explained in one of my previous podcasts, I do not think that the Federal Reserve was uh, uh, open to a discussion on the uh, stability of the dollar. It has already, even though it has acted very recklessly uh, in its... Uh, um, uh, in its stewardship of uh, the U.S. dollar, I think uh, one thing that they will not do is to kill it off. And they will try to control the inflation situation. They will try to solidify the, um, the reputation of the dollar. And I think because this round of everything bubble is so large and the ramifications is so high, I think they will have to kill the euro, kill the sterling, kill the Japanese yen, and uh, basically to save the dollar. And they will do it. So begging is ain't gonna help. Secondly, um, we're for the pension fund crisis, that one is easier. I think what they will do, they print money. They will print money to buy their own bonds to make sure that the yields still stay low. 
Uh, and uh, so I think that's very easy. Number three for the banking crisis, they will bail out the banks when they fail. And uh, what they will do is they will print a lot of money, um, whatever that is necessary to bail out the banks, to pay, pay the bankers, and of course, take some cuts for the politicians, for the big guys. And um, the situation will not be solved. Uh, the problem won't be solved. Uh, it will just be a bigger contagion. And uh, fourthly, for the energy crisis, they can't do anything with the energy because energy is something that you cannot print. But what they will do is they will print money. They will give money to the people to s telling them that, uh, you know, uh, these, with this money, you can pay for higher energy uh, to, to afford a higher, higher cost of energy. But because there is simply no supply, uh, there will still be shortages for, for industries. So basically, uh, what, they, what they are doing is killing off the industries because they will give the money to the people. They won't be giving money to the factories. So the people will take the money that's printed pay for electricity, pay for gas, and uh, the industries won't be able to afford any of that. So they will have to move, either close down or move abroad. Ma most of them probably will move to either the United States or to Asia. And uh, fifth, uh, lastly, for the econ economic crisis, I think, again, as you probably have figured out, the uh, solution will be a combination of money printing and uh, uh, money spending. So I, I don't want to go too much into that. So what is going to happen as a result of these actions? I think I'm, I'm afraid what is going to happen is hyperinflation, is uh, deindustrialization in Europe, and uh, it's a return to poverty. Just like Macron said in the, I think uh, the end of uh, August, it's a uh, fin de l'abondance, right? So it's the era of abundance uh, in Europe has ended and uh, Europe will become the, uh, just another part of uh, the third world. And uh, it is a moral blow. Uh, I mean, not a moral blow. It's a, a psychological blow to the Europeans. And uh, uh, but that is something that they can overcome very quickly because as you can see, I mean, I don't want to really, um, I, I, okay, sorry. I, I wanted to say something about uh, Ukrainians and, uh, um, you know, uh, what some of their women are do, were doing in the, since the 90s. Uh, but adapting to the market economy, etc. But uh, I think that is something that is a little bit cruel to say at this point. So uh, I'm not going to say that, but I think people adapt very quickly, um, even though it is often said uh, in China, in, in Chinese, which is that uh, it is easier to go from poverty to, uh, to riches than it is to go from riches to poverty. Um, I, I, I think... Not necessarily so, because uh, the instinct of survival is very strong. And so when there is no longer abundance, people can, I think, put down their uh, pretense very quickly, uh, dignity uh, very quickly, and uh, everything has a price. And if the price is a little bit low, well, uh, that's the market. So a little bit sad, and I think... Uh, um, one last thing I want to say, and this, I guess, it's a re-emphasis of what I have been saying for a year now, uh, which is that I don't think the euro will last another two years. A year ago, I, I was saying three to five years. Now I think probably one year. I give it a year, a year and a half. Uh, by the end of 2023, if there is still a euro, I'll be very, very surprised, extremely surprised. Uh, I think there won't be a euro left. For the pound, uh, certainly there will be the pound, but I'm not sure that Northern Ireland will be, will be there. But it's, it's better, you know, they save some ink. No longer saying Great Britain of uh, uh, and Northern Ireland, right? United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Uh, it used to be Great Britain and Great Britain and Ireland, 
Now it's Northern Ireland. Very soon it will be uh, United Kingdom of Great Britain, and then probably United Kingdom of uh, England and Wales. And finally, they say just in Kingdom of England. And I, I guess um, probably in a, in a few decades time, it will be just the Republic of England. Uh, I think that is really on the cards. And uh, uh, it is not a given that uh, Prince Willem is going to be a it will be is going to be crowned king. It could very well be that his father is the last king of uh, of 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 England. But whichever the case, make no mistake that the empire has fallen. There is no more British Empire, and that is a good thing. Uh, karma is a bitch, right? All right, thanks for listening and uh, have a great day.